Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and I'm bringing you one of the runners up of my replay competition. Here you can see we're watching Totally Me You of the EU server, and he's playing in his T110 E5. And after a very slow start, where he was only able to do 700 damage in the first three and a half minutes of the game, now his team is four tanks down. It's time for him to get stuck in. So we can see there a gr great clutch shot off on the bat chat there. And the bat chat then was killed by the Lorraine 15551. Now keep an eye out for that Lorraine 15551. That shot that he put on that bat chat saved that Lorraine's life, allowed the Lorraine to kill the bat chat. Here we can see he comes around the corner to focus down the M103. Taking track damage from the T110E5. Now we can see he did a very nice juke there to avoid the enemy T110E5 who was under a lot of pressure. Finishing him off. So nothing special so far really. Nothing special. He's evened the scores up a little bit but they just dropped behind another tank. So there's still three tanks behind now. Totally me, you zoomed out there to see if he could see which way his enemy were facing. He has a cheeky shot on the Coppola and the beautiful accuracy of the T-110E5, the punchy gun with high penetration is easily able to go through the Coppola there of the T-34. Putting the second shot through the track and backed up by his E-75 friend. Now just watch that, watch this E-75 melt. Oh god, he just got artilleried for all of his health. Right, not looking so good now. It's two versus five. And I hasten to add that he is against a Unicum T-54E1. Now he's playing with that same Lorraine 155. That's one of the reasons why I like this replay. Is that he saved this Lorraine 155's life at the beginning. With a clutch shot on the bat jam. Now they've got to work together against five enemy tanks, including a Unicum. In a tier 9 American autoloader. So right now they're thinking about what the best place is. Obviously, they're against four artillery, so they've decided to look one each way. The Lorraine has the T-110s back covered. And there you go, the T-110 sees his shot, and he fires a clutch shot off there on that T-54E1. A real great shot. The T-54E1's really trying to flank them. And now this is where I think Totally Miyu does an amazing move. Now he knows he's not being seen anymore. He decides, right, if I just sit there, they're going to move their artillery in and, and, and pound me from every direction. He tells the Lorraine to wait there. And he goes off on an absolute hero mission to go get this T-54, this Unicum player out. Now he gets proxy spotted. The T-54 realises, I can't kill that T-110, I've got to get out of here. Which is probably the right thing to do. He's got to think that he can get out in time. So Totally Miyu puts one more in the T-54E1 and he doesn't want to expose himself too much from the artillery. And oh god. He lost it just at the end there. But his Lorraine friend was helpful to him. And now, Totally Miyu has a serious situation on his hands. He goes around the corner and he gets a clutch shot off on the T-54E1. But oh my god, he just took a beating for that. So that makes you really think that when Totally Miyu was behind that building with his Lorraine friend, if they had stayed there, there, the artillery was already on the way. The artillery was already on the way. A less skilled player would have stayed behind that building, and without a doubt, the artillery would have smashed him. Now, one thing that he did badly there is he typed in the chat, Come at me. Um, he's obviously getting a little bit passionate. That's fine, you can be passionate, but don't let it get in the way of what you're doing. And really, that was the worst thing that he did all game, going around that corner at that tiger pointing his gun the wrong way, and he was just very lucky that the GW Tiger missed the shot. Otherwise, he would have donked out uh, a fantastic opportunity to have a, a real power carry in the game. So right now, he's still one versus three. 
He's thinking, he's thinking, okay, what's my best bet here? I know they've got three artillery. I've seen the object. I've seen the other tiger. We know that they're just around the corners. He needs one of them to make a mistake, really. If he tries and goes and pokes around the corner like he does now, he risks himself. But he's deciding that he can look through these archways and get a bit of a spot off. When he sees that he's not spotted, he makes his move. And that was the right thing to do again as well. We could see that the object 212 was trying to flank at the same time as the tiger. And even though the enemy are trying to coordinate to try and take him out, he's outmaneuvering them. One thing that's interesting is the Lorraine hasn't put a shot into him. But now he's turned the tables round. It's now two versus one. He's done over 5,000 damage here already. And you're going to see him side strafe out round the corner. Gives him a, a less easy target to hit if the Lorraine's camping up there. Seeing that the Lorraine is not camping that corner, he goes out to try and poke the object. And he's seen him. He pulls back, not wanting to risk it, and that's the right thing to do as well. The object 212 could take the game away from him so easily here. So, so now his Lorraine buddy, who he saved earlier, is now suggesting to him, leave him and go for the kill on the Lorraine. And that's completely the right thing to do. Totally me, you has listened to his friend. And now he's off on travels to try and find that sneaky Lorraine 155. So he's using the bush approach. Completely the right thing to do. He spots the Lorraine. He goes and puts a clutch shot into him, taking the Lorraine out. He goes over to the opposite side of the ridge because he realizes that the object 212 would have shot back at him from the town. Again, completely the right thing to do. Well, well thought out, totally me, you. It's all about remaining cool under pressure when you carry these kind of games at the end. So now that he knows that the object 212 is capping, he's safe to leave the mound. And he knows he's got a minute and 30 seconds. More than enough time. One of the key reasons why I'm showing this replay, guys, is it really shows you how you have to outthink your enemies in these kind of situations. He was reduced to 400 health against four artilleries. And fair enough, he played a bit donkey against that GW Tiger at the beginning. But after that bit of luck, he's really systematically been taking out these enemies. See, he's got six cents. He hasn't. He's been spotted. He's been spotted. He knows that. Okay, time to pull back. All right. So from that, let's just take a quick look as I zoom out. He knows now that the artillery is most likely beyond this line. He's probably not behind the building at the moment. As he got spotted. If I was him, I would be thinking that he might be behind the bushes, but... You can see here... He clearly thinks he's not behind the bushes because he didn't even aim his turret there. So totally me, you, obviously knows more than I do in this situation. He hugs the corner here, probably to avoid the proxy spot. And he's coming in. He's found him. Oh yes. Ram kill at the end on the object. 2-1-2. What a result. What a result. Let's take a look at some post-game stats. So here we can see the post-game stats for Totally Me You. We can see that he was able to get 3,800 experience for his double, which, as you guys will see, is very much lower than all of the other contest entries. However, this guy was able to pull off the only Tier 10 Colobanos medal that was submitted to me, where he successfully won the game at the end. Fair enough, he was against four artillery and a Unicum, but to be fair, he was against that Unicum at the end and four artillery, and that's never good odds. He got his Colobanos medal, he got the four kill artillery medal. He got a Radley Walters, as well as also getting the defender medal on the end and a sniper medal. 
totally Miyu, as we can see here, was able to dominate the game with 6,300 damage done, picking up 8 kills, and supporting that Lorraine at the end, who was equally able to do 3,000 damage during the game. Really, although this might not appear the most impressive game stats-wise, I really felt that we can all learn a lot of about the, the cool nature that Totally Me You had at the end of that game. Apart from a momentary lapse where he allowed his emotions to get the better of him when he YOLO'd around the corner at that GW Tiger while he was typing, Come at me, bro, in chat. After that, he handled the game really well, and he did absolutely everything right to minimize the amount of damage he could take, use his sixth sense to know about the enemy's positions, and then outmaneuver them. And that's everything that you need to do to win the game. He made a few choices which I don't think many people would have made. For example, when he went to go and attack that T-54, he showed great judgment there that he would not get hit by artillery and that he did not want to get surrounded by the artillery and he wanted to take that guy out before he turned it into a 5v1 at the end. As for all my other contestants who have won runners-up prizes, so to say, you're more than welcome to come and join me in my live stream, Totally Me You, and I look forward to playing with you. For everyone else, I hope you've enjoyed this Tier 10 Kolobanovs medal, which was the only entry that I received. I think there was a strong carry in this game, and full respect to you, Totally Me You. The game might not look that good on paper, but I really wanted to show all my subscribers a perfect example of thinking through the game at the end and taking out the enemy systematically. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this replay. Thanks a lot for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.